A very much welcome to the talk show on contemporary matters. I am Siksha Sharma and this time we are here with yet another interesting topic. And this time we are talking about the space mission, the NASA's uh, Pluto a mission that was launched in 2006 and uh, reached there in 2015. And we are here, uh, we have invited here in our studio Dr. Henry Throop. He is a NASA scientist and a Planetary Science Institute of the USA and also uh, he is part of the New Horizons mission of the NASA. Please welcome to our studio. Namaste. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, tell us more about the mission. So this is the first mission to the outer solar system, to the out to explore the furthest planet in the solar system, which mm -hmm. is Pluto. And so this is a uh, Pluto. If you look at our solar system, our solar system is made up of a bunch of different planets. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the, the, the planets that we all know and love, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars at the center. Mm -hmm. And those are all made out of rock. Then further out, we have the gas giant planets, which are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And those are made mostly of gas. And Pluto is kind of the odd one out. It's, uh, it's so far away from the sun mm -hmm. that it's, uh, you get, it, things get colder and colder the further you get out. And so it's mostly made of ice. Okay. And so it's the smallest of the planets, mm -hmm. and it's the coldest of the planets, and the, it's the most ice-rich of the planets. It's also unique because before our spacecraft went there, it's the only one that we had never, ever explored. And so the best okay. pictures that we had of Pluto were from the Hubble Space Telescope, but all you could see was a fuzzy, fuzzy blob. And Sorry. our spacecraft went by about three years ago and uh -huh. uh, took amazing pictures which revolutionized our knowledge of the outer solar system. So this is the first ever mission to Pluto? That's right, that's right. Okay, so that means since you, you said it's a very, very far from the Earth and the um, ice only that you can get there. So uh, the life is not imaginable. We did, this is not a, a mission which was searching for life. Okay. We're really, NASA is really interested in searching for life, and I'm personally really interested in searching for life. I hope that we find some life uh, either in our solar system or another solar system uh, sometime soon. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, at Pluto, um, it's very, very cold. That means chemistry happens pretty slowly, much more slowly than it does here. Chemistry happens best in liquids as well, and we don't have very much in the way of liquids at Pluto because mm -hmm. it's so cold. Mm -hmm. So there are much better places to look in the solar system for mm -hmm. life, like you can look on Mars, you can okay. look on the moons of Jupiter, mm -hmm. the moons of Saturn. Those mm -hmm. are much better places to look for life. Places for life, yes. And so tell us more interesting fact about the Pluto. So uh, when, we, when we started our mission, it, it took us about 10 years to, uh, uh, to just get the mission started. Um, this means convincing uh, Congress and convincing NASA and convincing, uh, working with other astronomers to build the case for the mission mm -hmm. to show that like, you know, Pluto is interesting enough and compelling enough that we really need, need to send a mission out there. This is not an inexpensive mission. It's about $700 million mission um, paid for by NASA, mm -hmm. uh, paid for by the U.S. The US government. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, is, um, this is a lot of money to invest in going mm -hmm. to Pluto. We don't do this uh, so that anyone's going to get rich from it. We don't do it mm -hmm. because Pluto can be mined or anything like that. We do it just to expand human curiosity. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're really, we want to know what the solar system is made of. Mm -hmm. Everybody on Earth wants to know, uh, you know, where we came from, what our origins are, what the origins of the solar system are. And this is mm -hmm. a mission which is really helping to piece that together. So are there any other planets beyond Pluto? Yeah, so that's that's really interesting question there. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be that you would say no. Um, uh, yeah, that's why we learned. Yeah, yeah. Like there so are nine planets. Yeah, you, you might have learned in school that there were nine yes. planets, right? Right. And um, uh, in the last twenty years or so, we found some other objects which are kind of like Pluto, mm -hmm. but further out. Now, all of them are a little bit smaller, a little bit further out. And for right now, we're calling those objects Kuiper Belt objects, oh. and we call this whole region uh, the Kuiper Belt. Uh, which is this region out beyond Pluto. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and Pluto is sort of the largest of the Kuiper Belt objects. Right now, many people call Pluto a planet and call mm -hmm. the other things Kuiper Belt objects, mm -hmm. but they're all, you know, they're all kind of variants on the same thing. They're small, icy bodies mm -hmm. at the outer edge of the solar system. Mm -hmm. And by small, Pluto is about a thousand kilometers across. So it's mm -hmm. more or less the size of our moon, mm -hmm. um, uh, smallest planet in the, in the solar system. And so it's much smaller than the Earth, which is about 6,000 kilometers across. Okay. So are there any, any kind of like interdependency between the planets, you know, the, the, the synergies between the planets, so even the, you say like the Earth, Mars, anything like Pluto? Yeah. Are there any interdependency between these planets? Well, the whole solar system, if you look at how the solar system was, was formed, 
uh, it's all kind of works like clockwork. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a, we had a big uh, cloud of da gas and dust about four and a half billion years ago, oh. which uh, which formed uh, which formed the sun and then formed the planets um, uh, from this big cloud of dust, and all these planets have been on uh, on orbits. You know, where we see the planets, their orbits now, is not where they've been throughout that whole time. For instance, Jupiter is kind of a big bully. Mm -hmm. Jupiter is the biggest uh, planet in the solar system, and Jupiter and its friend Saturn have moved around and shoved around all the other planets quite a bit through their history. Uh -huh. And so it really is a, it's kind of a network of planets rather than eight individual planets, mm -hmm. or nine, nine, nine nine individual planets. Nine individual planets, yeah. yes. And so it took like nearly 10 years to reach Pluto, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. You sent a uh, mission, a uh, spacecraft in the beginning of 2006. That's right, that's yes. right. So our and so in these, uh, between these years, how did you monitor the spacecraft? Yeah, so, so we sent our spacecraft in early 2006, in January, mm -hmm. and uh, we basically put it on top of a big rocket. It's the smallest spacecraft you can, you can build, essentially, on top of the biggest rocket that we could buy. Oh, wow. And so we put it out there, and, and it still took nine and a half years to get to Pluto, because Pluto is six billion kilometers away. Mm -hmm. uh, that's six billion, not six million, not six thousand. Oh. Um, so it takes uh, it takes an incredibly long, long time years. to get. Can yeah, you imagine? yeah. So yes. this even with the fastest spacecraft that, we, that we've ever sent from the Earth, mm -hmm. um, uh, it still took nine and a half years to get out to Pluto. Um, so we were monitoring it the whole time. It's this is it, this is a robotic spacecraft. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. there's no people on it. Um, it would be much more difficult to send people out there. Much yes. more expensive. You have to take life support systems. You have to take food. Mm -hmm. All these sorts of things. And, and so initially, you didn't know even there that it, if it supports life. Or and not. it really yes. doesn't. It's yes. just too cold to to support life. So yes. so. Um, uh, so yeah, we sent we sent our spacecraft, our robotic spacecraft, out there, which mm -hmm. is you know it's a couple hundred kilo kilograms. It's um, about the size of this table or so, a little bigger than this mm -hmm. table, um, and uh, uh, and so we tracked it as it goes out there. It's basically it's kind of like a paper airplane or like a bowling ball. Like you you push it at first, okay. and then most of the rest of its trip is just an unpowered cruise through space. The rocket mm -hmm. doesn't go along with it the whole way, okay. um, but it's just you, you know like a bowling ball you push it and then it keeps on rolling, rolling as long as you push it in the right direction. Uh -huh. So, you know, we have some good engineers who calculated exactly which direction it needs to go in to get to Pluto. Uh -huh. And uh, and then we were monitoring it. We could make small corrections to its course. Mm -hmm. And we did that a couple of times during the uh, during the mission. And how, how did you communicate with the device? We send radio signals back and forth mm -hmm. with it. And so we have some very, very large uh, radio dishes. Uh, there's one in the US, there's one in Spain, there's one in Australia. These are 80 meters across. Oh. And we, um, we use this to, uh, it's like a satellite dish, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it sends, you know, it's just that your satellite, instead of being thousands of kilometers away mm -hmm. or hundreds, is uh, billions of kilometers away. So you have to have a much, much bigger dish with much more power than a oh. normal satellite would have. But it's the same basic idea. In fact, it's mm -hmm. the same, you know, you can kind of think of our spacecraft as being just like your mobile. You know, oh. the main components on the spacecraft, mm -hmm. it has a camera, mm -hmm. it has a radio, and it has a battery everything that it needs to. And so it's just like your mobile, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you click a friend mm -hmm. and, you, you know, and then, you, and then you send it to them over the radio. That's exactly okay. what our spacecraft is doing. We click a pic mm -hmm. and then we hit send and it gets beamed All back right. to us All here. Right. So, it, so since it's very, very, very far away from the yeah. Earth, like you say, billions and billions of miles away, so how long did it take uh, to capture and send the pictures back to Earth? Yeah, so, so they get sent, these pictures, uh, so it took us nine years to get out there. Mm -hmm. And then it takes four hours for the light travel time is the same as the radio travel time. Radio oh, waves okay. go the speed of light. Same time. Yeah. And it only takes four hours for the signal to get back. It okay. takes nine hours for the spacecraft to get there, four hours for the signal uh, to get back. Right. However, we had a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. We took you know, several thousand pictures out of Pluto. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like if you're hitting send on your mobile and you, you know, if you want to send 2,000 pictures back, uh -huh. you're going to be like, and you have like one bar of signal, you know, it might take you a long time to hit send, send, send. Yes. And so it actually took us about a year to, to transmit all these images all back these to the images Earth. images back, yes. Yeah. And so how, how do you monitor, you know, like uh, these pictures I should take? Does the device does it by itself, or you guys really hear? Yeah, so we um, we in, may perhaps in the future, a spacecraft will be able to have more autonomy, more AI on it in order to mm -hmm. do that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But with this one, uh, we programmed it ahead of time and gave it an exact list of pictures to take. We said, you know, take 
three pictures going in a strip like this, mm -hmm. um, and then take a panoramic photo going across the whole thing, mm -hmm. then take a color image, which is on this side, like this, right. and so forth. And so we sent up the exact commands to the spacecraft to have it, to have it execute. Okay. So now the New Horizon mission has come out of hibernation mode like I heard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So here's the, here's the back story here. So we went to Pluto and we, we, uh, we got uh, some amazing science at Pluto. We found that Pluto was just wildly different than what we expected. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a fresher surface. It's a newer surface and younger and has mm -hmm. much more activity on it than we thought we would, than we thought it would have there. Uh -huh. We thought it'd be kind of old and cold out there. It turned out uh -huh. to be much yet more younger and active. Uh, well, so let yeah. me interrupt. How, what about day and light? Yeah. As, uh, so Pluto takes some. Um, have? Yeah. Pluto has spins around. You know, mm -hmm. we spin around every 24 hours. Pluto spins around ev about every uh, seven days, six and a half days. Oh, and so okay. it's daytime is about you know a week long wow, on the earth but get this it's year you know it takes us one year to go around the sun on pluto oh it god. takes 248 years to go around oh the sun oh my god and that means that some of it some of it like the, the one of the poles of pluto is completely in the dark and we didn't even because we're in the wrong season to observe it mm -hmm. so we knew this when we went there but it's okay. it's completely in the dark and so we couldn't even see all of the planet. We got some great images of, you know, the part which is in the summer, basically, uh -huh. but the part of the planet which was in the in the winter um, is just invisible to a spacecraft now because there's no light from the sun hitting it. Okay, okay. Let us get back to the yeah. hibernation. Okay, okay, so so um, uh, Pluto's not the edge of the solar system. I mentioned that there were these Kuiper Belt objects which mm -hmm. are out beyond yes. Pluto, and what I mean by beyond is maybe another, you know, 10, 20, 30 percent further. Okay. And so we have this great spacecraft, mm -hmm. and the spacecraft is still working well. Mm -hmm. It didn't stop at Pluto, and that's because we would love to land on Pluto, we would love to orbit Pluto, but mm -hmm. the spacecraft is actually going too fast, uh -huh. and it's very hard to slow something down uh -huh. uh, in space because you don't have anything to push against, yes. and we didn't have enough fuel to just you know, stop it. Okay. Pluto doesn't have enough gravity to capture it. We mm -hmm. knew this, mm -hmm. um, and so this was designed to be a flyby mission. Mm -hmm. So our spacecraft is going past Pluto, and we thought, well, what can we do with this spacecraft? Ah! Let's see if there's any Kuiper Belt objects which are on okay. our path. And so we did a very, uh, uh, a very intense search for Kuiper Belt objects, these mm -hmm. small icy bodies, which are like Pluto, but even smaller, smaller using the Hubble Space Telescope. Mm -hmm. And we actually found a couple of them. And we, mm -hmm. we have retargeted our spacecraft mm -hmm. so that we're going to go past one of them. And we're going to go past it on January 1st, 2019. Oh, wow. So coming up in about uh, six months or so. Yeah. And so that's really exciting. It lets us, you know, what's really interesting about astronomy is not just studying one planet, yeah. but studying all the planets Numerous and seeing how they planets. compare. And so we want to look at this Kuiper Belt object and see, uh -huh. is it the same as Pluto? Uh -huh. Or is it different than Pluto? And how does it all fit into the picture? Okay. So after having uh, learned so much about Pluto, how, wh what does NASA plans to do for that? With so uh, there's a lot of different places to visit in the solar system. Mm -hmm. We probably won't have a, another mission to Pluto uh, mm -hmm. soon. But NASA has a lot of other missions, uh, NASA and other space agencies too. Um, the Indian Space Agency, the Japanese Space Agency, mm -hmm. the European Space Agency, and hopefully in the future, the ne Nepalese Space Agency yeah, will uh, start doing this satellite. too. Yeah, still planning to do satellite. Yes, yes I, there's, there's interest, very interesting work on, uh, on uh, uh, possibly building a Nepalese yes. satellite. So um, we have lots of missions that are lined up. There's one called InSight, uh -huh. which is uh, headed toward Mars. And the InSight mission is, um, uh, we'll actually study um, what, what are called Mars quakes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, here we know about the devastating effects of earthquakes on, uh, on the Earth in Nepal. And, and um, we want to understand how earthquakes work. We want to understand how earthquakes work throughout the solar system. Okay. And so this is essentially... Earthquake-like thing happen in other planets? Yeah, it's, well? it's, it's really interesting that, that Mars may well have not earthquakes, but Mars quakes. Mars quakes, as well. yes. <laughs> and so by studying how, uh, how earthquakes work on Mars, mm -hmm. we can understand how earthquakes work and how the core of, of the Earth or the core of Mars uh, works on other planets as well. Yeah, okay. So tell us uh, about your uh, visit this time in Nepal. Okay, yeah. Yes. So I've, uh, I've come to Nepal for just a short visit. I wish I could stay longer. It's three days that I've been, uh, that I've been here in mm -hmm. Kathmandu. And I've been given, uh, giving a, a couple of seminars um, across, the, across the city here. Uh, I gave one at the, um, at the American Center, which is the library inside the U.S. Embassy. Uh -huh. um, there's many, many uh, students who regularly visit this library. It's a well-stocked library. Anybody can go in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, they have a lot of science books there. They have a lot of books, uh, especially at the secondary level, for mm -hmm. students to come in and study. And so I met with about 50 or so uh, students. We talked about astrobiology, which okay. is a search for life in the universe. Okay. And uh, those are really some great students. So they were super motivated, super smart, tons of questions. 
um, and it was really exciting to uh, to talk with them. Okay, and that then, was uh, very interactive. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday I went to uh, Southwestern State College, mm -hmm. and I uh, talked with about 350 students there, um, mm -hmm. secondary and at the uh, university level. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, you know, I just couldn't stop the questions because there's so much curiosity in Nepal. There's so much well, interest. What, what in were the common questions that the students were asking? Oh, you know, they they go they go, uh, you know. Everywhere across the board, uh, some people are interested in um, in you know the details of how you construct a spacecraft, oh. and um, you know what's it what's it made of? How does it get out there? How do you actually you know what sort of fuel do you use? Oh. Um, other people are interested in um, you know the questions of life, like where should we look for life in the universe? Mm -hmm. Why not look for life at Pluto? Um, other people are interested in um, comparing our solar system to other solar systems, like. Uh, you know, so there's there's so much curiosity, and I you know I I, I love seeing that, and mm -hmm. you know that that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is doing astronomy is because, you know, we all have these questions, and I think it's really neat that uh -huh. hundreds of years ago we could look up at the sky, and you know we could see dots move across the sky, but we didn't really know what they were. We yeah. didn't know. You just imagine it. Yeah. Yes. Like what's Saturn made of? What's uh -huh. Jupiter made of? And and they were just dots, and now through telescopes, through spacecraft, mm -hmm. uh, which are you know, accessible to so many people. Anybody in the world can download essentially all of NASA's data yes. um, and, and view it and, and process it themselves. Uh -huh. um, and there's inexpensive telescopes available. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and anybody can look at these and participate in exploration of the universe. Yes, very interesting one. So how do you develop the uh, idea of you, you know, involved, getting involved in those sort of things? So um, I've, you know, I've always been interested when I grew up. I didn't have a telescope. I wasn't that interested in astronomy then. Um, mm. But I, uh, I spent us, I, I was always taking apart things. I was a physics major as an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I, I uh, entered into a, um, a postgraduate program in astronomy. Uh -huh. and, uh, and it was actually after I entered in that program that I really thought, like, wow, this is really exciting. <laughs> oh, wow. um, when I first got to, uh, you know, do research, and be involved. I was looking. My first project, research project, was involved in uh, Saturn's rings, and so I was looking for just what are the origin of Saturn's uh -huh. rings? Where do they come from? Uh, why are they this way? What co what caused them to be this color, which is a little bit yellowish? You know, what mm -hmm. caused them to change over time? And uh, so my advisor um, at the University of Colorado uh, just gave me a bunch of data, gave me these uh, uh, these sets, and said, "Go go at it. You know, be creative, um, study this stuff, and come back." and tell me what's going on with, uh, with Saturn's rings. And so, um, you know, it's very different doing research than taking uh -huh. classes. You need a lot of background from, from doing, uh, you know, from, from, from classes. But then research is very much, you know, kind of, kind of open-ended and free form. And that's, oh, yeah. uh, I really have enjoyed that. Yes, it's and very I think that is really what motivates so many people is, is mm -hmm. getting to, you know, define a, define a problem and explore areas that are that are uh, interesting yes. and curious to them. Every every now and then you have to get you will get new information and new findings on it. Yeah. So, uh, what other institutions are you associated with besides NASA? Yeah. So, um, um, I, the institution which I work for in the U.S. is uh, called PSI, the Planetary Science Institute, and mm -hmm. PSI um, uh, is given money by NASA through grants to do research and operate spacecraft and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's another group. The group that built our spacecraft is called SWRI, the Southwest Research Institute, mm -hmm. and this is both. These are nonprofit groups, um, which are funded by NASA uh, to do just basic research of the solar system. Mm -hmm. So, do you happen to uh, visit any of the institutes that are working with the space here in Nepal? I haven't yet. No, mm -hmm. I. I uh, uh, I know there's a there's an astrophysics program at mm -hmm. TU, which mm -hmm. is uh, I met a bunch of the students from TU yesterday, okay. um, and that's really exciting to to see what's happening there. Mm -hmm. And Nepal does have a uh, you know some some history of, of astronomy too. There's a, uh, a a colleague of mine in the he's a Nepalese uh, guy, young guy, mm -hmm. um, Lujendra Oja, and mm -hmm. he is uh, one of the leading experts in the world on looking for water on oh. Mars. And wow. so water on Mars is really, uh, you know, really, really a hot topic. He's from, uh, from Doti in the mm -hmm. West. And, and um, as a graduate student uh, at the University of Arizona, mm -hmm. he, was, he was just looking through, uh, through data um, to, to see, uh, y you know, what, what he could tell about the, the essentially the colors, the spectrum of mm -hmm. Mars. And what he found is evidence that there was, there's been water very recently on the surface of Mars. And that might have something to do with mm -hmm. there being little tiny pockets of life. You know, most of Mars is pretty dry and mm -hmm. um, maybe doesn't support life. But it could be there's little pockets of life uh, on Mars in these, in these uh, regions which are wet. 
So n n it's never find out any life on any of the planets. No, we keep now. looking for life, and we've never not found any. Not any organism, no, not any no. bacteria, not any. That's right. That's right. Okay. We have never. We've looked for life on the moon. We haven't found it, um, except for life that we brought there, <laughs> like uh -huh. on the, you know on the Apollo mission, uh, you know, like the people, for instance. Okay. Um, we've never found any life on comets. We've never found any life um, on you know on Mars. Um, we found little little hints that might be. You know that might hint at something, but never anything that's definitive. It's we, because of the water that you indicated. Uh, yeah, it could be related yes. to that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we've, um, you know, we have a lot of interest in looking for life because you know NASA wants to find life. I want to find life. And, you know, all of us are interested. The big question that uh -huh. astronomers are doing, and many people are interested in, is like, what's our origin? Where did we come from? Mm -hmm. um, and by looking for, you know, by looking, are are we unique in the universe? Is there All life right. on other planets? Is there uh -huh. life on other solar systems? Or are we the only ones here? It's such uh -huh. a big question. And now we're just getting close to where we can start to answer that question. OK. So let, uh, let's uh, go to another interesting topic. Yeah. What about the aliens? Yeah, so aliens is, is the, that's exactly actually the same as the last topic. Aliens and life, we're kind of saying the same thing. OK. So um, you, you mean to say that aliens are some kind of life? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes when people are saying like, oh, uh, you know, we're going to search for aliens, or astronomers would use different words. They would say we're looking for life in uh -huh. the universe, but it's the same thing. And we're okay, people interpret it like, yeah. like yeah. for the aliens. So when we're looking for life, we're not necessarily looking for like a you know a green person with antennas All who right. walks around on two uh -huh. legs or anything like that. But uh -huh. we are looking for. Um, you know, that would be a type of life, any, but we're also any, looking for bacteria or animals or fish or you know anything okay. like. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, you might read about Roswell or Area 51. And mm -hmm. this is, these are, for the most part, just hoaxes. You know, okay. someone who wants to tell a story. It's someone uh -huh. who wants to get attention, publicity. Okay. Um, most of the time when, when you see, you know, s someone might have a report about, you know, we found a UFO yes. flying here. Yes. It's a silver, you know, okay. a silver disc flying above so the Himalayas. Those are not true. Uh, for the most part, no, no. We, no, we have. Okay. It's very easy to debunk almost all of those. Um, okay. And uh, as as you know, maybe not a hoax, but someone who's just mistaken um, uh -huh. that they think that they saw something, but it turned out to be a formation of airplanes, or mm -hmm. it turned out to be a weather balloon, or it turned out to be um, an atmospheric effect which okay. caused this. And so it can be really exciting to see these uh -huh. things. But scientifically. Um, as much as we try, because we would uh -huh. love to follow up on those and find and prove that there's a life, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's basically the uh, presumption or the assumption that we have uh, uh, made up on our minds, uh, seeing the pictures during the 80s about the science finds, uh, science five pictures. Yeah, um, it's basically yeah, about that yeah, origination of, yeah, the yeah, same. Yeah, sometimes people get just a little carried away with those pictures. Uh -huh, yep, yes, yep, maybe yep. it's like that. Yeah. but you are constantly in search of. The astronomers. Yeah, so we are we are constant. There are many many programs at NASA. NASA spends you know hundreds of millions of dollars a year, as does the European Space Agency and other space mm -hmm. agencies. You know, okay. other space agencies across the world in in um, uh, trying to under, understand the history of uh, of life and look for life. Um, the Indian Space Agency, for instance, has uh -huh. a, a mission called the Mars Orbiter Mission, which mm -hmm. is going around Mars right now, and one of its jobs. Is to um, is to look for the chemical signature of methane mm. on the surface, and methane would be really interesting because it's produced uh, it's it's produced by essentially all life. Uh, mm -hmm. Bacteria makes life, animals make life. Uh, bacteria makes methane, animals mm -hmm. make methane, we make methane, and so mm -hmm. um, this is orbiting Mars and searching for the traces of methane. And so uh, you know, India is very um, very into the search as well as so many other countries. Okay, so let me get back to again Pluto. One more interesting question Please. I would like to ask you. Um, since you put the spacecraft into a hibernation mode, how did you do that? Okay, so our spacecraft is, uh, you know, it's right now it's operating for longer than we planned. Mm -hmm. um, we just uh, anticipated that we would get out to Pluto, mm -hmm. and now we've gone for a couple years after that. And our spacecraft is not observing all the time because there's not, you know, space is kind of empty, you know, unless you're next to a planet or unless you're looking for really tiny things like dust particles, uh -huh. there's not much to look at most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're not going past any stars. The stars are much, much further away, so they look mm -hmm. exactly the same um, from the spacecraft's point of view as, as we do, so mm -hmm. uh, as it does from Earth. And so um, we hibernate the spacecraft just like a bear. It uh -huh. uh, just goes to sleep. Sometimes uh -huh. it goes to sleep for a couple of months. Uh -huh. um, and so you didn't even know? Uh, no, we tell it. We tell okay. it to. Okay. We tell it to. And that's for basically to protect it. Okay. Um, because we need to just save, um, um, y you know, we, we want to uh, not overuse the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. It does have a, you know, we don't want to uh, 
um, use too much fuel on it. We don't want to tax it too much, tax the electronics. And so we just put it, intentionally put it in hibernation mode. We let it sleep, and then a couple months later, we'll send it a message to say, hey, wake up, wake up. It's like an alarm clock. And so how long did it take to wake up? Um, it's pretty quick. I mean, we, we send a signal to it, and, uh, and then it, uh, you know, it's, it's like rebooting your computer. Oh. Um, like you might turn your computer off, oh. close the lid on your laptop, something like that. And then when you open the lid, it comes back from hibernation. Maybe it takes, you know, 10 minutes to start up, something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, life in any of the planets? Where you keep looking, you know? Not a Pluto, too cold. Uh -huh. um, but here's the interesting place to look. I mean, I think if you're looking for life, you could look at um, Mars, of course, because you know, Mars is pretty dry right now, but it mm -hmm. used to have lots of water going on it. Um, and we can actually see these old pictures. Um, what I mean by old is about three billion years ago. We have the, oh. there's still canyons that were carved by the water that was on Mars. And there's not enough water now to carve the canyons there. But mm -hmm. there was back three billion years ago. And so Mars used to have life. My guess is that, if it is that there's probably not life on Mars now. But there mm -hmm. could be life, um, like fossils of life, that is buried down deep below the surface. Mm -hmm. That um, is more to be explored. That's, that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe down there. Um, it... Uh, uh, you can also go to Europa. Europa is one of the moons of Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And Europa is exciting because it has a whole ocean going around it now. Okay. And so, so every planet has its own moon? Um, some, some planets do, some planets don't. For instance, Mercury does not have any moons. Okay. Mercury's so our moon that we see from the Earth, it's yeah. our moon? It's just ours. Yep, right. It's our private moon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. private moon. Mercury doesn't have any moons. Uh -huh. uh, Venus does not have any moons. Right. Um, but Jupiter has like 50 moons, 60 moons. Oh, my God. Yeah. has four big ones. Oh. And uh, one, a couple of those are the ones that we're really interested in, in uh, looking okay, for life okay. because there might be big oceans. Okay. They have ice on the surface, but then there's mm -hmm. oceans below the ice. So it'd be kind of like looking for life mm -hmm. below the north polar cap mm -hmm. of the Earth or okay. below a glacier. All right. And so you have to dig down, mm -hmm. or maybe if you sample the surface, if you look at the surface carefully mm -hmm. enough for long enough, you can see you know, little changes or some, some uh, uh, you know, emissions coming from down below or something like that, which All might right. be evidence of life. Okay, okay. So, uh, one more question before we uh, close this program. So, what's the uh, use? I mean, like, uh, how, how, uh, why moon is essential for any of the planet? Um, the moon, it turns out on our, our you know, it's not really essential. Okay. Um, it turns out our moon actually has done some good. Our moon probably stabilizes the Earth, makes it, if it wasn't for our moon, the Earth uh, would actually tilt back and forth um, a little bit more. Right. It probably is not a make or break deal. Mm -hmm. Life would probably exist. Um, still, still. It would find, because life, life tends to adapt. You know, we still have the seasons, and maybe sometimes people, you know, you have to dress up more in the winter, uh -huh. and you dress down a little bit more in the summer, but, uh, but, uh, but life adapts. And so mm -hmm. even if we had, you know, the, the, the moon helps give us kind of softer seasons mm -hmm. um, and keep, keep things more stable, but we would be okay without a moon. Um, Mars has two moons, but they're very small moons, and so they don't have a big influence on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Pluto has five moons, oh, wow. which is uh, um, really nice for such a small planet out there. Yes. We had a very uh, nice, in this short conversation. Thank you for being with us in our studio. No, say it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, we talked about the space and the NASA's mission to Pluto that uh, ended in, two th uh, still not ended yet. But next time, we'll come up with yet another interesting topic. For now, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.